Hello, how are you? We see worse with age. Eye problems such as age-related macular degeneration, AMD, glaucoma, cataracts, or diabetic retinopathy can hinder many everyday activities. We talked about this in a previous video, which is linked here. There we also discussed some adaptations that could be made to make life easier and improve safety. Today we want to provide even more ideas, and go one step further, with the emphasis on prevention. In addition to adapting the prescription of your glasses or contact lenses as often as your eyes require, there are other changes that will result in more comfort and, who knows, even prevent a bad fall. Let's start with lighting. When we are young we adapt to everything, but as we get older it is preferable to direct the light where we need it and away from our eyes. Potentially dangerous areas, such as entrances and stairwells, should be fitted with additional lighting. And use curtains or blinds to regulate natural light so that it is sufficient, but not dazzling. Next, consider contrast, which helps to distinguish objects by their brightness and color, rather than by their shape and location. Apart from sufficient light, it is a good idea to use dark colored switches on light walls, or vice versa, or switches that glow softly in the dark. You can also mark the different positions of the oven dials, for example, or the important buttons on all the controls with eye-catching labels. It might be worth painting the door frames a different color to the door itself, and installing contrasting knobs. Incidentally, it would be better if they could not get caught on clothing, to avoid dangerous imbalances. And in the bathroom, contrasting colors can be used for elements such as cups, soap dishes, and even the soap itself. This idea is particularly relevant when it comes to pharmaceuticals, you can use different colored labels, large bold letters on a white background, or learn to feel the raised signs in braille that come on cardboard packaging. But if we take a bottle out of its packaging, it may be a good idea to use a distinctive rubber band number for each medicine to feel out the number when it needs to be taken. Especially if there is a possibility of confusion, of course. On the other hand, there are pill dispensers with large print, embossed signs, or even more sophisticated pill dispensers with light and sound indicators. One particular case is that of diabetics. Since insulin dosage is vital, and an excess can lead to dangerous hyperglycemia, it is worth considering the existing aids, either because you suffer from diabetic retinopathy, or because you simply do not have good eyesight, for whatever reason. Needle guides are available to help locate and stick the needle through the rubber stopper of the insulin bottle. There are also devices to hold the bottle and syringe to safely draw insulin, and even devices that allow the same amount to be drawn every time. But perhaps the best solution is pens, some use cartridges that are inserted into the pen. Others are bought ready loaded and discarded after all the insulin has been used. The insulin dose is marked on the pen with an easy to use dial, and the insulin is injected through a needle. Para medir la glucemia hay medidores que dan el resultado por voz o con letra grande. La misma tecnología sirve para las balanzas de cocina para medir con precisión las cantidades de alimento. Pasemos ahora a hablar de... The concept of contrast, taken to stairs, means that the edges of the steps should be highlighted with adhesive strips, which are high friction and easy to distinguish. Carpets should disappear, because even if they are taped to the floor to prevent slipping, there is always the possibility of tripping. We should also forget about polished or waxed floors, as well as excessively smooth floors. Electrical cables should be kept out of the way, but if this is not possible, it is better to use adhesive tape to avoid tripping over them. Furniture should be arranged so that it does not protrude into busy areas. 
Chairs should be tucked under tables and desks when not in use. The same applies to drawers in desks, tables or cupboards. Doors that are left ajar are hazard, as are doors that protrude. It is better to keep them completely closed, or open with a catch, so that if there is a draft they do not change their position, sometimes you don't even need that. The inclination of the bracket itself causes the door leaf to change position. And what about the handrails? They should be fitted on both sides of the staircase, and cover the entire length of the staircase. People often trip when they jump over a step at the top or bottom of a slope. It may even be a good idea to install handrails in other potentially dangerous areas, as well as handholds in the toilet, next to the toilet, and in the shower or bathtub. Incidentally, it would be better to replace the bathtub with a shower tray. In any case, it is a good idea to get all the help you can get to maintain maximum autonomy. It is essential to call on friends and family members to carry out the adaptations you see, to ask them for help in getting around, or to contact organizations specializing in visual impairment. They can provide invaluable advice on the technological adaptations that exist and are most appropriate for the specific case. In Spain, which is where I am speaking from, a good starting point is the Spanish National Organization for the Blind, the ONCE. That's all for today. I hope I have provided useful information. Thank you very much, and see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.